Amen. Ephesians, amen, chapter number two. Amen. God. Glad you're here as well. Amen. amen. Ephesians chapter two and verse number twelve to fifteen. And the word of the Lord reads, it isn't good to have sunshine. Amen. 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 Don't nobody say it's too hot. Amen. amen. We thank God for the hot. Amen. We need more of it. Let it keep on coming. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 12. It says that at that time ye were without Christ. Someone said I was, but I'm not no more. Amen. Amen. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promises. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off or made nigh or close by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who have made both one and has broken down the middle wall a partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in himself a twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereof. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I could leave a thought with you today, I would say you are the new man. Yes. Amen. When we talk about man, we talk about mankind. Amen. Jesus had a purpose of coming into the world, amen, and that was to start things new in our life. Yes. Why? Because we made too many mistakes in the past. Yes. And so what the Lord said, you have to start all over again. Amen. amen. And when you start looking into the scripture here, it starts out with saying we was aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, we was cut off from the kingdom of God. At that time, the commonwealth of Israel, amen, was the kingdom of God. Amen. amen. Until Apostle Paul went into the Gentiles, where most of us come from. Amen. And then we all became part of that commonwealth of the kingdom of God. And we were strangers from the covenant of promises. In other words, we were, so, we were cut off from God. And so even though problems came up in our life, we had no, no power, no authority. There was no one to go to, amen? So we tried to handle problems where it was in marriage or finances, on a job, raising children, just problems in life. We were trying to handle it on our own, and it brought frustrations, irritations, some people health have failed, high blood pressure and anxiety, mental health problems, trying to handle life problems by themselves. And all these issues that came up in our life, what happened is it made some of us run toward God and say, there's got to be another way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Surely there's more to life than just paying bills. Amen. Yes. And watching TV. Amen. Somebody said it got to be something more because I'm not getting the, the peace just by going to the club and the pub. I'm not getting the peace and the love that I need or I feel just by being married or having partners or whatever real. There's something that's missing. Amen. Amen. And because of our hunger and our thirst for whatever it is that's missing, some people turn around and say, let me try God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so now that brings us to where we are in the scripture. It says, says in the 13th verse, but and now in Christ Jesus, who were sometimes afar off, were made close by the blood of Christ. So in other words, we were far off from God, and we were away from God. We was cut off from his peace. We were cut off from his joy. We was cut off from hope, because we, our hope was in who's going to be prime minister. <laughs> We got to depend on that. That's not a whole lot of hope, is it? Amen. <laughs> or in my country, who will be president? Just as bad, I guess. 
And, and so the thing is, is that we was cut off, amen, from God, and but God brought us close to him into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus. In other words, when Jesus shed his blood on Calvary Cross, what happened is it bridged the gap between man and God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Man was never intended to live outside of God. For God said in Genesis, he said, I'll make man in my own image and in my own likeness. God is not depressed. He's not oppressed. God is not worried about tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And he made us in his image and his likeness. So we should have the same joy, the peace, hope in God. Amen. amen. But then when, the, when uh, Adam sinned in the garden, amen, that cut the fellowship from God. Amen. And so through all this time in life, man was cut off from God and trying to deal with situations on his own. And so what happened is when Jesus said, okay, uh, I will die for your sins. I'll be the sacrifice for your sins by shedding my blood on Calvary Cross. That bridged the gap between man and God. So God now said, only thing you have to do is confess Jesus Christ, amen. And what he did, did on Calvary Cross by shedding his blood for your sins and repent, amen. And now that gap is filled, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And so now everybody has the opportunity to be a new person. Amen. Yes. Everyone has the opportunity to have joy, to have peace, and to have hope. Amen. Yes. Because the bridge has been filled. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is why it brings on into the 14th verse. It says, for he is our peace. He is our peace. Because now my peace is not dependent on the world. Amen. It's not dependent on if you're married or you're single, if you have children or don't have children, amen. My peace is dependent on God gives me peace. Amen. It's that inner peace that's inside your soul, amen. Yeah. You don't have to search for it. You don't have to look for it. It is you, amen. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about the new man, amen. amen. It has became you and you have became it, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, okay. He is our peace who have made both one, back into, into communion with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And have broken down that middle wall of petition which I talked about earlier about that bridge. God broke it down and now we're one. Amen. Amen. Bible said Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. And has abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances. There used to be that when man was cut off from God, where then Moses had to go up to and get the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witnesses, and on and on, amen. But people still did it. Amen. Because man had no power to live beyond it, amen. And so someone had to go and offer up their sacrifice by killing a lamb or goat or whatever, amen, for that sin, amen. But then man just go on sin again, amen. But what happened is, well, those commandments, they constantly broke. Ordinances, they constantly broke. But once we have became in Christ, amen, well then you're not under the law because you obey the law because the law is in you, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The desire to, to bear false witness, amen, is gone, amen. The desire, amen, to lie, cheat, kill, steal, amen, that has gone, amen, because the new man, God took out that old heart and he put in a new heart. Yes, amen. You remember Nicodemus, amen, uh, he came by night, amen, and he said, uh, 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 what must I do, amen? And, and he said, you must be born again, amen. amen. He said, you must be born again. Whatever is flesh is flesh. Whatever is spirit is spirit. So basically, amen, that was the new man. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so he reconciled both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. So now we understand what took place. Now let's go on from there. Now, having put on this new man, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. There's a difference between being in Christ and around Christ. Yes. 
I have Facebook, amen. There's a lot of people around me on Facebook. I don't know them. They don't know me, amen. But they're around me because we, we, we're on Facebook together. And then there's some people who are part of my life, like my wife, my child, amen. Praise the Lord. And so there's, it's more close and more intimate, amen. amen. You can be around Christ, but not in Christ. I'll say it again. You can be around Christ, around the church, but not in church. And then what happens is that peace and that joy that uh, the word the, the, uh, that comes from God, you are around it, but it's not in you. So, God has created the new person. And a lot of times, you know, when you buy something new, you buy a new hat, a new suit, and it looks all nice, nice dress, amen. Nice frock, amen, and, and you hang it up. And it looks good. You say, I'm going to wear that one day. One day when a special occasion comes, I'm putting that frock on, go out, amen. And it may look good, hang it up, but it looks better if it's on you. Yes. Amen. amen. <laughs> and, and this way it is with, with a lot of people with Christianity is they are around Christ, but they don't put them on every day. Now, Reason why a lot of people don't put it on every day because it's not familiar. We operate on what's familiar with us. We was born up with ourselves. We've been dealing with ourselves all our life. And now something new has came. A lot of people don't like new and, and are not accustomed to it. So the new person has came up, but you have to actually put it on yourself. So how do you put on the new man? Well, when you get up in the morning, you have to start your day off right. Just like you got to put on your, uh, brush your teeth, put on your clothes and look presentable and go, go out and do what you need to do. You have to put on Christ at the same time. Mm, yes. Amen. So that means you get up in the morning and you start praying. Yes. You get up in the morning, you put on some worship music. Amen. Amen. You start your day off right. And then what happened is that uh, joy and that peace, amen, it, it's, your spiritual man raises up and you're walking as the new person. Amen. And what happens is, you, as you put it, him on, amen, well then he becomes familiar and a part of your life. Yes. Now, problems will still come up in life, but the new man is on you. Mm -hmm. People will talk about you maybe at your job. There'll be a frustrating day trying to raise the children in the home and everything else. But the new man is still giving you the peace, Amen. But you have to put him on. Yes. Amen. Amen. You have to put him on day by day. Yes. Because what happened is, is that the old man constantly tried to slip back in. Yes. The old way of dealing with things and the old way of thinking constantly tries to come back. And so you have to put it to death about talking about crucified by the spirit. Amen. Every day, amen. amen. That's all called Apostle Paul. He said, when well, I die daily. So he said, every day, well, then the old man constantly tries to come back. Now, Apostle Paul was someone who was in the complete will of God, amen. amen, doing what God called him to do, but yet and still that old man constantly come back. So much so that Apostle Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always present with me. That those things that I would do, I do not. And those things I would rather not do, those things I do. Yes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so he said, Every, even though I'm in the will of God and walking with God and I want to do right, the old man is constantly fighting against me. Amen. Amen. And so every day, you got to put on the new man. Amen. Amen. And if you're not uh, understanding what is really taking place in our lives, amen, the next thing you know, the old man will take you right back into depression and oppression and, and your joy gone, your peace is gone, and you're like, well, what happened? I did accept Jesus Christ. Yes, you did, amen. But what has happened is the old man constantly comes back and you have to crucify him every day. Yes. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what needs to pass away? The Bible says, any man in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things became new. 
What has passed away? What should have passed away? You know, I was looking at that scripture and then there was a following scripture behind it and said, for he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, that is, means that our desire to just please ourselves should have just passed away because he given us another ministry. Another Ministry really means serving. Yes. Amen. That's what ministry is. Amen. Someone said they're a minister, but they're saying that they're a servant. Amen. Amen. I'm a minister. I'm here to serve you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not no high position whatever we're here to serve people. Amen. Amen. But he has given us, the Bible said, all of us a ministry of reconciliation. And so in other words, he's given us the ministry, amen, uh, and that's in uh, uh, chapter 5, verse number 18 and 19. He's given us all the ministry to reconcile people back to God. In other words, he said, now that I have freed you, you need to go and free somebody else. Yes. Yes. Amen. amen. That's part of the new man. Yes. Now, what makes that more difficult today than it did maybe 20, 30 years ago? We got to get this but for, for younger people, give you some understanding. My parents came from the generation of uh, the Depression. They were raised during the Depression, 1930s, amen. And during that time, you know, there were children back then. During that time, if, you wanted, if your neighbor didn't have a cup of sugar, you give them a cup of sugar. You knock on people's door, actually. You knock on someone's door, they probably get shot, amen. <laughs> but back then, you need the sugar, you knock on your neighbor's door, do you have some sugar? Yeah, here you go. Amen. Everybody looked it out for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. People used to leave their doors, their back door open in case you could go in and get refrigerator and get something else you needed. Amen. Yeah. That's the generation they care. And so with that generation, it was normal, amen, to help people, to work with people, and to serve people. Amen. amen. If you looked it out for yourself, only you would starve to death. Amen. Yeah. And so what happened is that generation is starting to pass away. But in the new generation, the way things are set up is yourself. Yeah. Amen. And it somehow has been brought in people to just look out for themselves. And so what's happened is, even though we are in the, uh, God has given us all a ministry or reconciliation to work and encourage other people and, the, and let them know that there is a God, amen, and help people, the world standard is different from God's standard. Amen. Amen. And so the world is saying, no, you operate in this way. And the kingdom of God said, no, you operate in this way. And so we are in the middle of being tossed. And it's not just like with that. It's like with a lot of other things, too. The, the world would say, uh, take care of yourself. Amen. The world would say, you know, just work and pay your bills and that's it. Amen. While the kingdom of God is saying, invest in the kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. The world will say, well, when you're depressed, amen, go and take a pill, amen, to get rid of your depression, amen. While the kingdom of God said, well, you're depressed, amen, well, then pray, amen. And so you have the old man and the new man fighting against each other, amen. The, the old man will say, well, if you uh, need some joy, amen, go and drink until you got joy, amen. <laughs> and then the new man, amen, would say, no, you want joy. The Bible said, leap for joy. Amen. amen. That may sound crazy, just leap for joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the joy comes in. Amen. amen. Yeah. That is scripture. Amen. It said, well, anybody want joy? Leap for joy. Amen. amen. Praise God and worship the Lord. And what happens is it stirs up the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit fills you with his joy. Amen. When you start praising and glorifying God, amen, but then the Spirit of the Lord comes in, he raises up, and your joy comes back. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the Bible said, God said, my ways are not your ways, but yet it says his ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. Amen. amen. And so, putting on the new man is very key, amen, not just being around the new man, but actually putting them on day by day. So that brings up another question. Could the answer to your prayers be in the new man? 
The situation that you're dealing with in life couldn't be in the new man, but you're dealing with it in the old man. Maybe that problem in the marriage, amen, you're dealing with the old man and the way the old man would deal with it, while the new man wants to deal with it another way. The Bible says a soft answer turned back to wrath. So maybe the old man got wrath, and the new man said, just have a soft answer. But because we're accustomed to dealing with ourselves in the old way, we don't pay attention to our new way. Amen. I remember when uh, I was in the Air Force. I was in the American Air Force for 22 years, and I lived a lot of different places. But I remember one time uh, when I joined the Air Force, they said, okay, uh, for six weeks, we're going to send you to basic training when I first joined. The reason why, they said, because we want the old man to go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. We want the old way man to go away, the old way of thinking, the old way of dealing with things, the old civilian life, amen. We want all that to go away so that you become a new person, a military person, okay? And so what happened is they cut all my hair off. Do it as I know I'm going to leave anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> they cut all my hair off so we all looked alike, Amen. You couldn't tell one person from the other. They, we, we all had to wear the same uniform for us six weeks. Okay, for that six weeks, we all had to wear the same uniform. We had to cloak. We had to um, make our beds up in a certain way, and everything had to be uniform. To this day, I like everything uniform. Amen. Even though that's been many, many, many years ago, decades ago, still to this day, my wife still gets irritated with me because I want everything just right. <laughs> <laughs> I want, you know, I want bed made right, I want to, everything, you know, I don't like junk just scattered all over the house and stuff, okay? Because that's the way out, you know, the, once you get the new man on, you want to continue to walk in it, amen? Yeah. It has changed your lifestyle, yeah. amen? And what needs to happen in a lot of times when you first get saved, you need six weeks of basic training, wow. yeah. amen? Yeah. That the old man is crucified, put to death, amen? For at least six weeks, you need to be in Bible study, amen. You need to be in prayer. You need to be feeding yourself, amen, to get rid of the old man, amen. And you don't do that. What happens is you constantly, for decades, you constantly fight backwards and forward. Now, so some people that uh, went to basic training with me, they didn't make it. They fell out of basic training. They put them out because they would not change, <laughs> amen. And the thing is, is that God doesn't put us out because his grace and his mercy and his love. Amen. Yes. And so he just said, let them go up together. Amen. But then it reaches a point in time that he says, okay, these words, you, I'm going to keep on having people knocking at the door, giving you some more words here, giving you some more words there and whatnot, until that change happens. He's going to constantly work with you and work with you. And you will always feel, well, there's something more I need because God is dealing with you. Amen. Yeah. Trying to get that old man to go away. Yeah. That that new man to come in and bring in life, peace, hope, to bring in miracles. Amen. Where yes. you can pray for things and doors are open up in your life. God desire for us to be the head and not the tail. Amen. Amen. Above and not beneath. Amen. And that all comes in from the new man. Amen. Yeah. So put on the new man. Amen. Amen. A lot of people's lives have been changed. Amen. Just by putting on the new person. There was a lady in the Bible They said she was caught in the act of adultery. Amen. That's pretty bad to be caught in the act. And it was getting ready to stone her to death. And they went, they went to Jesus and said, well, what do you think about trying to get him caught up? He said, you without sin cast the first stone. Yes. And they all walked away. None of them could do anything. And he just said, just go and sin no more. That's, from that day on, that lady's life would change. She was even at the cross, amen, and after Jesus came back, amen. amen. One of the first people to recognize he rose from the dead, amen, looking for him, amen. amen. Life changed. There was another lady who had 
or she, she had just a little bit of flour and oil left. And she said, I'm going to eat this and then we're going to die. There's no hope. I imagine there's some people saying, you know, there's no hope. I'll just take this little bit like God. I'm just waiting to die because I don't see no way out of this situation in my life. My life is not going to change. And God is saying, yes, it will. Put on the new man. Yeah. He, put the, he said the prophet over her house, amen, and her oil and her, and her food never ran out. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. The answer to your prayer could be in the new man. Yes. Amen. amen. The things that you're dealing with in life could be actually in that new person oh that's hanging in the closet. It's time to pull out those old, that new garment, amen, and put him on. Amen. amen. And walk in his love. Walk in his joy. Walk in his peace. Amen. amen. And let God finish what he started <laughs> in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's all I got to say today. Amen. amen. Put on the new man. Yes. We love you. Amen. Amen. God loves you. Amen. Yes. And he wants you to walk in victory and in power. Amen. Mm -hmm. And in purpose in your life. Yes. Let us stand.